Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today I'll be going through uh, my predictions for round 7 and also going through what happened in round 6, which was Anzac round. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Um, the first game of round 6, of course, was Fremantle versus Western Bulldogs. It was the Dogs getting um, the job done by 8 goals in the end. I did tip the Dogs, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, and my big call was for the Dogs to kick 4 or more goals in the third quarter, um, thinking the game would be quite low scoring in the second half. I did manage to get that one correct. The Dogs were pretty good in that game. Um, and then it was Port Adelaide versus West Coast to kick off uh, the Saturday games. And I tipped Port by 41, so they won by 40. I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't get that one correct, seeming I was so close, but oh well. Um, uh, it was a very, very good attempt, though. Uh, my big call was Port to have 10 or more individual goal kickers. I think they had 7 to 8, so not so good there. Um, and then it was uh, Brisbane versus GWS. Uh, Brisbane obviously getting the job done. I did tip Brisbane, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, my big call, though, was Neil to have 115 or more fantasy points, and he had a really bad one. So, yeah, another incorrect big call there. And then... Arguably one of the most impressive performances of the weekend, Geelong getting the job done in the grand final rematch by nearly 100 points in the end. Uh, I did tip the cats, so um, yeah, I'll take that. And uh, my big call was uh, Sydney to kick the first three goals of the game. And uh, yeah, they had to kick one goal in the first quarter, and they didn't kick any goals in the second half. So yeah, uh, an awful game from them. And then arguably one of the uh, the thrilling games of the round, Hawthorne versus Adelaide. I was watching this game. Uh, I did tip Adelaide, and I was hoping Adelaide could get the job done, and they somehow came back, and Hawthorne have yet choked another one, um, unbelievably. Um, and my big call was for the Crows to kick 10 or more goals in the second half, and they barely kicked 10 for the game. So, um, yeah, not a good tip there. Um and then it was Carlton versus St Kilda. Uh, St Kilda getting the job done. Um, you could argue it was an upset. Then again, it was pretty pretty even. Uh, but unfortunately, I did tip Carlton, so I got that one incorrect. My big call was the margin never goes beyond three or more goals. And it did because St Kilda were able to break away in the second half. Though the first half, that would the way it was going, it looked like it was going to be correct. Um, but Colton, uh, Colton just struggled in the second half. Um, and then, obviously, Gold Coast uh, getting the job done um, over Heritage Bank Stadium against North Melbourne, uh, and by quite a bit as well. I did tip Gold Coast, uh, so you take that any day of the week. My big call was the Suns to take 100 or more marks, and they had that, like, in the third quarter, um, and they took nearly over 150, I think it was, so that was a beautiful, uh, big call, uh, to get correct, um, and then it was, uh, Anzac Day Eve, the big clash, uh, between the Tigers and the Dees, and, well, the Tigers looked like they were going to run away with it at one point, but Melbourne managed to come back and, uh, win the game, thanks to my big call, which was, uh, succeeded, um, my big call was the Dees to kick a run of six or more goals in a row, and that run of six goals in a row won them the game. It could have been more, uh, but I just counted the six, the five they kicked in the last, and the one they got in the three-quarter time buzzer, thanks to Clayton Oliver. Uh, so, yeah, well done to them. Um, and then, of course, Anzac Day. It was the Pies getting the job done, thankfully, over the Bombers. You could argue the Bombers choked it, uh, but the Pies, they just never say die, and they always find a way. Uh, my big call was for Hill, Ginevan, and Majacek to combine for 12 or more goals. Majacek, I know, didn't kick any. I don't think Hill kicked any, and Ginevan kicked two or three, so not the best there. Quite clearly a fail. So I got eight out of nine for my tips. Very, very happy with that. Uh, and got the three big calls, which is... I think that might be my best so far. So, yeah, not bad. I'll, definitely my best round of the season so far, fair to say. Um, but, yeah, let's get straight into my predictions for round seven. Uh, so the opening game is St Kilda versus Port Adelaide at Marble Stadium. Now the two teams are in great form. Uh, we'll start with Port Adelaide. Uh, they played very, very well against West Coast. Just banked in the four points, uh, which is what you've got to do against West Coast. Uh, they had a few position changes, a few of their defenders playing forward. 
Um, Todd Marshall is out with concussion, and Tom Jonas has been suspended, so that is big losses for Port Adelaide. But they're in good form. They're four and two. I predicted them to come in the bottom five, and that is definitely not going to happen. Quite embarrassing, I know. Uh, but yeah, Port uh, are in some pretty good form, and of course the Saints. They're five and one, sitting on top of the ladder. I only lost Kane to Collingwood. They were brilliant last week against St Kilda. Their forward line really got to work in the second half. Their defence held up strong in the first half. Even though Carlton were quite inaccurate in the second half, I still thought their defence was pretty solid. Um, and, yeah, look, they've, they've just had a great season so far under Ross Boss, And it looks like it may continue against Port Adelaide here. Friday Night Lights, it's going to be a big game. But I think St Kilda get the job done by 18 points. Uh, my big call, uh, the Saints are in front for the entire match. A little bit of a different big call. Um, so, yeah. Um, then the first of the many Saturday games uh, for the first time this season, we will have five Saturday games. A lot, that's for sure. Um, definitely, definitely too many. Uh, but it is the Dockers versus the Lions at the Gabba. Um, now, Freo, wow, they just... Uh, yeah, they, they had an awful performance against the Western Bulldogs and they're having an awful season and they've just got to find a way to uh, get some form. Um, they just couldn't win their hands on the footy, really. They, they got smashed in the contestant uh, count. Um, their forward line, I, like I've said many times, is just poor. Probably the worst in the competition, I want to say. Um, and their, their defence wasn't great either against the Western Bulldogs. So, really, they've got no... No, no areas where they're doing well at the moment because their defence was horrible against the Western Bulldogs. Um, and if the dogs kick straight at it, probably should have been worse. And with the Lions, well, Charlie Cameron got them over the line in the end. Kicked seven goals. He was fantastic. Um, a few of their midfielders st stood up in the second half. But otherwise, they just had a, had a solid performance. You know, it's always good to kick over 100 points, so I feel like we'd be pretty happy with that. Their forward line just outsmarted the Giants, really. Um, didn't help that they had a few injuries to their defenders as well, the Giants. Um, but yeah, look, Brisbane, they're, they're flying at the moment, uh, and Freo are the complete opposite, so I reckon this one could get ugly if Freo uh, do not give any sort of a crack. But I'll go say, tip the Brisbane um, by only 31 points. Um, my big call, Lions kick five or more behinds than goals. Um, did them be a bit inaccurate in this one. Um, and then arguably one of the dead rubber games of this round, but not in my opinion. I reckon this one could be game of the round. It is, of course, the Battle of the Bridge, Sydney versus GWS. It will be a beauty in my opinion. I reckon these two teams are pretty evenly matched coming off last week. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Giants are a pretty good team this year. Um, after all, I mean, not great, but, like, average, and they sit in 12th on the ladder at the moment, I don't think they'll come that high, but around there is probably alright for them, and, well, the Sydney, uh, that, that was just an awful performance from them, um, it just looked like no one was really trying, no one could keep up with Geelong, and they just smashed them in the midfield, uh, Sydney's defence, of course, we know they've had heaps of injuries, it was very, very poor, and their forward line was pretty rubbish in the second half as well. So, yeah, look, it wasn't great, but they need to find a way to bounce back. The Giants, they had a fairly good performance against Brisbane, um, and they were very good against Hawthorne as well in the comeback. Um, I think I feel like um, Adam Kingsley is the right man, and take a couple or a few years, and the Giants could be back to finals footy. They're playing some pretty good footy at the moment, um, they controlled the footy against Brisbane uh, quite a bit, and they have done that a lot this season, though Sam Taylor is now a huge out um, for their defence. It's going to be hugely costly. He's a brilliant player for them. Uh, out for three to four months, that's just a disastrous blow. Adam Kennedy also did an ACL, so that's awful news for the Giants' defence. They don't have too many defenders down there. Uh, Sydney hopeful that they can get players returning. Um... As much as I'd love to tip the Giants, um, I think it's better to tip Sydney and be wrong than tipping the Giants and be wrong, that's for sure. So I tip Sydney by six points in a thriller. My big call, GWS kicked the first three goals of the game. Um, 
Then, the big game for the Bont and the Bulldogs uh, taking on the Hawks at Marvel for Bont and Pally's 200th game. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big game for the Western Bulldogs and they're coming off some pretty great form as well. Bont and Pally's absolutely killing it at the moment. Uh, definitely one of the be best players in the comp right now. And yeah, look, they just had a great performance. Adam Trelaw as well is dominating. Um, Liberatore has been very, very good, but he's a massive loss uh, with concussion out this week. Uh, so they'll be hopeful Bailey Smith can return uh, in his absence. Um, Tim English is also dominating. Their defence was very solid against the Dockers, um, and their forward line looked very, very dangerous, had heaps of um, goal kickers that kicked heaps, and their midfield uh, just dominated the Dockers. Um, and Hawthorne, they had a pretty good performance, one of their better ones of the season, that's for sure. They do like playing down at Tassie. Um, and yes, some of their real young kids really stepped up. I thought a few of them uh, were very, very good. Pity that Max Lynch is out with concussion. Eighth or ninth now in his career. It's unbelievable, uh, really. Uh, so yeah, best of luck for him. Hopefully he can get back to playing some football. Um, but yeah, look, uh, they, they were pretty good Hawthorne. Uh, I thought their defence held up well against Adelaide. They were quite inaccurate in the first half, uh, the Crows. Um, but yeah, I thought that was probably their best defensive game uh, for the season for Hawthorne. Their midfield's playing pretty nicely, and yeah, look, 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 they've got a pretty strong side. Um, they know how to win the ball. Um, they just need to find ways to run out games, really, because that's the second time they've they've choked one now in a row as well. It it, it hurts, and I could see this one blowing out for the Bulldogs. They're in pretty good form. Uh, but I think Hawthorne can uh, maintain some momentum here and uh, hopefully uh, for them they can put up a good performance. Mitchell Lewis could be returning as well from his ACL, so that creates um, big news for them. Um, definitely should help their forward line. But I'm going to tip the dogs by 28 points. My big call, uh, Bon and Chalor combined for 70 or more disposals and 4 or more goals. Uh, they're flying at the moment. And then a very, very interesting time slot for this game uh, being the Channel 7 uh, Saturday primetime game, um, Essendon, uh, sorry, Melbourne versus North Melbourne. Uh, Going to be an interesting game, that's for sure. Um, North Melbourne haven't had a few good wakes in Melbourne. Well, they were just lucky to get the job done, thanks to some real young uh, guns and Kay Chandler and Jacob Van Ryan, who managed to get them over the line against the, the Tigers. Their defence was pretty poor. Um, their midfield got beaten in the first half, I fought. Uh, they fought their way back, though, and they were able to get uh, a good run of goals and just ran over the top of the Tigers in the last quarter. And, well, North Melbourne, they've had a real struggle. They were all right in that last quarter. Uh, they've only got a few forwards real, really dominating. Nick Larky's losing his way a bit. And, look... North Melbourne, they just really, really need to find a way to just get a good performance on the board. But, of course, everyone will be tipping the days here by 40 points. For me, my big call, uh, 10 or less goals are combined in the second half. Um, and then the other uh, Saturday game, um, almost the more interesting one, in in my opinion, uh, West Coast versus Carlton. Um, Carlton, they're coming off a loss against West Coast. Um, now, Harry Mackay. We'll start with him. He, he was very, very atrocious. And, yeah, his, his kicking is really, really bad. He needs to get to work with that because at the moment it's just not working properly. And, yeah, he just needs to find a way to, I, I guess, just get some momentum back into his game. And uh, Patrick Cripps was very, very good. But apart from that, they just couldn't really, again, keep up with St Kilda. Like, they couldn't keep up with Adelaide. Um, And West Coast, you know, they've had some impressive games now. Um. You know, the, just to stay with clubs. Um, again, in the second half, they were probably better, in my opinion, than Port uh, for majority of it. Um, and Jai Cully was very, very impressive. He kicked four goals. Um, Big-bodied midfielder, very tall for a midfielder as well. Uh, played forward, kicked some goals. Uh, he was very, very impressive. Unfortunately, Luke Shuey is going to be out for a month. Uh, he just come came back from a returning hamstring injury. Now he's done a calf or something. It's just disastrous for him, really. Uh, their forward line's in good form, though, West Coast. I reckon this one will be a high-scoring one. Uh, but you've got to go the safety with Carlton by 19 points. My big call, Alan 
Oscar Allen and uh, Charlie Curnow combined for six or more goals. Um, and then we start off with the Sunday games. Essendon taking on Geelong. Now, Geelong were very, very impressive against Sydney. They were just fantastic. Jeremy Cameron probably leading um, nearly the Brownlow as well as the Coleman. Just in fantastic form. Um, and, yeah, Geelong, they, they, this was their real um, good performance, this one. Um, the first one that I can actually say that they would have won the game if Jeremy Cameron wasn't playing. Um, but, yeah, they were just fantastic. Um, it'll be very, very interesting to see how Jeremy Cameron goes, seeming at the moment. Um, on average, he can actually um, get 100-plus uh, goals if he continues his current form. So... That will be very, very interesting to see if he can maintain that over the season. Um, and Essendon were very, very impressive too, but they've got to be on their A game. Their defence was brilliant against Collingwood um, for three quarters of the game. Uh, they played pretty well for the first three quarters of the game. Obviously, we know what happened in the last quarter, but excluding that, they were pretty good. Cole Langford was dangerous in front of the goals. Uh, their midfield was pretty good. Uh, Draper and Phillips, the ruck combination, was working. Um, for majority of the game, um, their defence, like I said before, was very, very solid and ha will have to be, again, playing a really good Geelong team. And, um, look, they, they, they were pretty impressive, I thought. The Dons and were unlucky in the end and, um, unfortunately, they, they just couldn't get anything going in the last quarter for them. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be the same again. Geelong by 14 points. My big call, Cats come from behind at three-quarter time at win. So you can argue the Bombers might choke back-to-back -back games, um, in my opinion. Um, then we got Richmond versus Gold Coast, a very, very interesting uh, Sunday Arvo football game. Uh, the Suns and Tigers, they're, they're both at the bottom of the ladder, both struggling, both just getting un unnecessary, well, losses, really. Gold Coast are coming off a win, though. Pretty big one, um, winning that game quite... Um, by quite a bit against North Melbourne. Um, big one, though. Took Miller out and out for quite a bit of time, too. That's just huge for the Gold Coast. And I'm not sure who's going to be able to step up. And, yeah, getting rid of Took Miller is like getting rid of part of the Gold Coast. So, yeah, they're going to have to really, really uh, find a way to um, maintain their midfield, and, like, they've just got to find a replacement, and you can't find a replacement for a guy of that quality, Matt Rowe, Noah Anderson, Fiorini, uh, Nick Holman, them type of guys have got to really, really step up for the Suns, and Richmond, look, they've been very, very bad this season, we know they're still probably favourites to, I don't know, make the eight, um, but the way they're going, they might not make the eight at the moment, Richmond, um, let alone top 10, like, they're, they're just doing pretty awfully, um, they've got quite a young team, and, uh, yeah, they just can't quite find the results, I think Tom Lynch out is definitely, definitely hurting them, um, their forward line was pretty good, though, against, uh, Melbourne, um, it's just in that last quarter, they just couldn't get anything going, but I think they should be able to win this game against the Suns, and going safe and tipping Richmond by 10 points, my big call, uh, Daniel Rioli has 35 or more disposals and 10 or more marks in a very, very, very dominant game from him. He's having a very, very good season for Richmond. Um, and the final game of the round, arguably the most, um, I don't know, best contest, I guess. It could be very, very close. Adelaide versus Collingwood. Adelaide have been ridiculous this season. Their forward line has been the best in the competition, definitely, I can, I can say. Uh, Tex Walker was massive late for them. Fogarty and Rankin slotting late goals to get over the Hawks. They didn't play amazingly. They weren't great even. They were barely even good. They just got the result. And that's what you got to do against bottom teams. If you want to make the eight, you just got to beat the bottom teams. Beat the teams that are below you. Take it up to the teams above you. And uh, seeming it is at the Adelaide Oval, it will be a challenge. That's for sure for the Pies. Um, now, the Pies, they were all obviously very, very good in that last quarter. Um, they just need a good four-quarter performance, really, and uh, they definitely will need one to beat the Crows, that's for sure. They're a very, very good football club, the Crows. Uh, great outfit at the moment. They're just dominating. Um, but I guess the big thing for Adelaide is can they stop Nick Dacos? He's in ridiculous form, we know. Coming off back-to-back -back 40 disposal games, 
just kicking goals as well. He's definitely leading the Brown, though, and probably the favourite nearly from here. If he bags in a couple more free votes, he'll definitely be the favourite. Um, I feel like our forward line played quite well in the last term, uh, so hopefully we can keep that momentum going and um, sustain it. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we can get a few players back too. Um, I think Murphy's coming back from concussion, which is good. Uh, Adam's back from suspension as well, so get some more experience in. But I thought our VFL boys did quite well, and there will be a bit of a selection squeeze on our hands. Um, but you got to go with your team. you got to back your own team in. you got to be biased. I'll go Collingwood. Um, again, like I said the past two weeks, um, if I was a Collingwood fan, I probably would tip um, Adelaide here. But I'm going to go Collingwood by one point. It'll be a one-point game, I reckon. Um, my big call, McCreary, kicks three or more goals. He's just so underrated. and Yeah, I just love talking about him. He's just such a great player for us, and hopefully he can have this three-goal performance. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video. Stay tuned for more tipping videos uh, coming out soon on the channel and also uh, my Collingwood review um, after the game against the Crows.